she could paint a thousand <laughs> words, then why can't I paint you? If a face could launch a thousand ships, yours could sink a few. <laughs> Sorry, we digressed. This is the Comedy Slab podcast. The reason we digress, I've got to tell you, is because um, the bit that you don't... Well, I was going to say the bit we don't record, but sometimes we do, but we just chop it off. Urgh. Urgh. Um, Stop it. Is it the st- we, we kind of get together and catch up on what we've been doing and gossip and all sorts of stuff. And this week, for some reason, we ventured down <laughs> yin and yang... Uh, AKA a- a- Bill Mitchell. I can't remember the other guy now. Oh, now I've lost it on the thing uh, as well. Bar- um, well, Barry is the character, isn't it? Yeah, but, um, <laughs> Barry's the piano player. He just goes, <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's all he says. <laughs> and we got into that. And that's why Bill Mitchell, if you don't know, is the guy that did denim after shave <laughs> for men. Um, oh, it goes right through sort me. Of stuff. Which I've been, that voice I've been able to do since I was about, I think it goes back to about four years old. Anyway, sorry, so I do digress. It is the Comedy Slab podcast. I'm Shane O'Connor. He's Adrian Lacey. If you're not caught up with us before, come on, please, will you? Try and catch up. You've got 116 episodes behind this one. Um, So you've got a lot of homework to do. Um, Each week Mm. we get together, having had a look at a comedy that we've chosen the week before. He chooses one one week, I choose one the next and uh, we chat about the bits we liked, the bits we weren't so keen on. We'll play you a couple of clips, and at the end of it all, uh, we'll give it a score out of five each. <clears throat> I know I shouldn't have done my Bill Mitchell voice. My voice is going now. By the time we get to the end of the podcast, we're going... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> serves you right. <laughs> we'll, give it a, we'll give it a score out of five each, giving it a total grand score out of ten. And that's about it, isn't it, I think, my old sausage? Apart from actually tell them which show we're putting on the slab this week, although mm. it is in the blurb. I was going to keep him in suspenders for a bit in case they hadn't. Well, hadn't read kinky it, so and so. Yeah. Um, how, how much longer? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I don't want any more silence because I just think of you in suspenders, and that really is an image I don't want to stay with. Shame, got some pictures I could have sent you, but I won't now. So, uh, <laughs> thank goodness for that. We we are looking this week at, well, is it the return of an old friend? I wonder, um, because we're going back to the nineteen nineties, I think, wasn't it? When it finally bit I the think dust. It was, well, yes, but it started in the eighties, first time around, was it not? Huge in the eighties, yeah, wasn't be. it? I yeah. mean, that was the, yeah. I think it was the eighties and, and sort of nineties that it. it Satirise politics, entertainment, sport, our entire way of life, I suppose, really. We're talking, of course, about uh, the latex love puppets spitting image, <laughs> uh, which we'll be having a look at. But oh, before we do, though, um, mm. you've spotted some interesting comedy news this week. Yes, uh, thanks to chortle.co.uk, uh, the number one comedy site, apart from one or two others. Which Chipotle. are also n- number one, yes. Um, it's got uh, a, a stig in the tail, some spice. <laughs> anyway, your mates, the pin, remember them? Oh, the yes. um, radio duo that you fell for. Well, I say radio, obviously they're, they're a live act as well. Um, I, I, it, took, it took me to read it out to you in rehearsal, darling, to realise the pun of the headline. I'm obviously a bit slow and head is part of the pun line. No, pun is the headline. The pin head for the West End is what it says. Oh, you the pin see, head. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. You can hear a pin drop as well. You see, I'm more um, uh, geared up to it since I made a complete spanner of myself by <laughs> not <laughs> not getting a show that I actually put on the slab, uh, on the Comedy Slab podcast, uh, Ideal. And you went, of course, you know, he's a drug dealer and that's why it's called Ideal. You're still Ooh. smarting over that, aren't you? That's many I, months honestly, ago, if not over a year. Every morning I get up and I think, oh, <laughs> what, what, what was I doing? What was I, doing? I think uh, you got PTSD. Uh, so the comedy double out the pin, and people can check out our, what we made of the uh, Radio 4 show uh, of that name, or obviously them appearing in it, um, by doing a search uh, on Spreaker, amongst other places, in our archive. Um, they're starring in a West End play. Now, this is very brave, brave of everyone, really, under the circumstances. But it's all been um, COVIDed. But the danger, of course, is that the guidelines change by the time we get to December the eighth, when it's uh, due to start. But fingers crossed. I mean, we speak even as London this very day, uh, or well, it's been announced, is going into um, tier two, so uh, tighter uh, COVID regulations. But let's mm. 
across everything for that, for it uh, appearing at the Noel Coward Theatre in London's West End. And um, each night, apparently, it's going to have a surprise celeb guest star playing a cameo. Does that remind you of any play that you may or may not have seen previously? Uh... Uh, double act? Uh, more, the Morgan and Wise tribute, the play What I Wrote. Oh, right, okay. I didn't, yeah, yeah, I get it, yeah, I get it now. Because that's how they, they got their their comedy guest in, wasn't it, on their, their show, presumably that's where they yes. got the title from, yeah, the, the play What I Wrote, yeah. But when you say uh, comedy guest, the night I saw it, it was Michael Fish, the weather forecaster. Oh, I want my money back. <laughs> well, no offence to him, but he's a comedian he ain't. No. So, um, a fish he ain't, thought really, that, is he? Let's be honest. Uh, well, yes, exactly. <laughs> Very you know, good. I mean, but come on. Also very, well, very awful as well as being very good at the same time. I mean, I love the, like, Ben Ashenden and, and Alex Owen, I love, I think they were just, they were a, 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 a real enlightenment. When you meant, because you, it was you that put us onto them. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased that you were, uh, seem to still be in the afterglow of enjoying them. Really, really enjoyed And I almost, I, I gobbled up their four series, I think, of The Pin. Uh, which kind of changed a little bit as we, we took, which, as it went on, which I kind of liked as well. I, I sort of thought, you know, they were they were uh, big enough to, to reformat, and I think it started off as fifteen minutes, and it went to thirty minutes, and they changed the way they did it, and you know, various things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm massive fans. I don't want to pour damp water on it, but um, is there any other kind? Um, <laughs> but Ricky, I follow Ricky Gervais on Twitter. Yeah, and he was supposed to be doing a stand up in. Late October, early November, and that's been cancelled. Uh, I think it was one of his warm up gigs uh, for his for his latest one, and I think I think that's been knocked on the head. Has the whole thing gone? Mm. Presumably, it has. I think. Well, that's the, reading between the lines. That's that's not going to happen either. Yeah. Oh dear. They, they're well, just a really yeah. tight unit. These guys, though, aren't they? Ben, Ben, and Alex are just. They, what I was really impressed with was they were. They were all, and it's it's interesting to mention Morecambe and Wise because they they were to me they could carry off the double act in the true tradition of the sense of the phrase. Well, they certainly you get a real sense that they they interlock with each other, don't they? And they yeah. get uh, in a way that I mean that should be the norm for every double act, but I don't think it is somehow. They seem to take that to another height. But even the little things like the ums and the yeah. and the, the just the responses to each other. So. Um, yeah, well, I I hope they can do something. Uh, I don't know. In place of that, if the, if if uh, if the plug gets pulled on the on the show, uh, then I don't know. Maybe it can be streamed or something like that. Mm. Just got to get it out there. But it started out apparently as uh, their twenty eighteen Edinburgh show called Backstage, and uh, the new one, assuming it does happen, is called The Comeback. It might be tempting fate in itself, mightn't it? Yeah. But um, we've seen the price of tickets: 18, 18 quid to sixty-five pounds seventy-five. For sixty-five quid, do you get to be in it? Do you get to be the comedy <laughs> guest? Uh, I, I think you get to uh, a credit for bankrolling them for that money. You do know that's that's. Quid? I know, but that's not so unusual for the West End. I'm sorry to say. No wonder Cameron Macintosh don't get anywhere on the bus. Yeah. He doesn't need to, does he? Really? Let's be honest. Not sixty-five pound a ticket plus. Um, can I just say that um, there is a website called chipotle.co.uk. <laughs> is it about chipotle by any chance, and not comedy? Yeah, there, there are. Ch- I don't know if they're restaurants or takeaways, but they're they're only based in London. There, there's a chain. There's there's one in Knightsbridge, one in Baker Street, one at King William Street, one at London Wall, Wardour Street. You probably wouldn't get much change out of sixty-five quid for a meal in Knightsbridge. I do wonder, though, if people go onto their website and go, well, this isn't very funny. I don't know what's happened to Chortle these days. <laughs> Chortle's really gone downhill. don't think much of these gags. Look, it's just a list of bits of food. Or do you think that people go onto Chortle and go, oh, I can't find the bloody menu, can you? I don't know where it is. <laughs> brum, brum. <laughs> anyway, we must move on, as I do, whenever I see um, an expensive menu. Or indeed me. On the other side of the street. <laughs> well, there's that as well, yes. <laughs> okay. Move swiftly on. So, spitting image. Yeah, 1980s, as you already said, um, mm. they were the satire vehicle of, of I was going to say of ITV, but of TV, weren't they? I mean, they were on ITV. Proud to say, actually, that it all started right here in, in the Midlands, in Birmingham, in actual fact, with, with uh, Central Independent Television. 
Gosh, that's a, that's a phrase you don't hear these days. Do you know, I miss that. I think that's why television... You know, we talked about ITV and television and ITV comedy mm-hmm. not not being so, you know, so great. And I think it's the lack of competition. There used to be all these different, you know, Yorkshire, Tyne Tees, Thames, um, Granada, Central. They used, always used to... to um, compete against each other to make the best because they wanted to get their program networked and that's why i think we had we had great progress but anyway i digress again sorry i know so uh, well it might be relevant because um hey there is a reason why um uh monopolies are discouraged because it discourages uh well it just it kills competition just doesn't it, it so does. pray pray continue uh created by peter fluck and roger law you don't want to call them out on uh on a cold night when you've had a few do you and uh, I mean, writers too too numerous to mention. I mean, it's like it is the real territory of the gag writer, isn't it? Really? Yes. Um, this this kind of thing uh, brought back for BritBox, which is a which is a curious thing in itself. Uh, made by Avalon TV, though, and brought back for uh, for BritBox. Uh, and because it's only just kind of started, we we went with um, the new series episode one, didn't we? Mm. Um, should we should we have a a clipette, uh, so that you can you can divulge some of your innermost secrets. Oh yes, and it might even get me time to write the headline that I've had all week to write and haven't thought once about. He always does this just to go, <laughs> and then when people go, "What a great headline!" and they go, "Yeah, I know." It was just <laughs> thought up at the spur of the moment. If only, darling. If only you're going to set the scene. Well, yeah, there's not much scene to set, really. I mean, it's it is a sketch show, isn't it? So uh, mm. all I need to say is. Um, Cut to Boris and Dominic Cummings. Dom, I've been uh, uh, looking at this speech that you've written. Uh, rather harsh, you know, uh, a bit of a sledgehammer. Uh, I'm not sure about starting. Attention, you, the underclass. Yes, we should cut the niceties and get straight to sacrifice yourself for the good of the hive. All uh, right, uh, and by hive, you mean... I mean future of the hive. Uh, I mean country. Are you dissatisfied with me? Perhaps you would like to fire me. Oh, I, I, I don't think that would be necessary. I thought not. <coughs> so, this is what you call a baby? Um, yes. It looks delicious. May I eat it? <laughs> Jolly good. Uh, afraid not. Uh, uh, Carrie would be furious. Then I shall not do that. Instead, I shall eat some of your earth snacks. <laughs> uh, good aid. Uh, now, uh, you're right. Composting the drones will ensure the survival of the elite. Is there a problem? Well, it's more of a Cameron Osborne type of policy. It is not liberal or conservative. It is basic hive maintenance. Yeah, I just want a bit more sunlit upland. Pims in deck chairs and a bit less vaporising strikers with death rays. Hmm. Right, do you want the headline? If you like. (laughs) Master. (laughs) <laughs> it, it it contains a question mark, hence the voice going up at the end. Oh, okay. Spitting image problem? Question mm. mark? Mm. Mm. Just a question mark. Okay. Which is a bit non-committal, I know, but I didn't want to be all damning, as we will dig into, because there's loads to enjoy and loads of skill in there and um, fun and games, but just wondering about... Uh, well, is it you? You mentioned the the S word satire. Is it even satire? Is it as straightforward as being able to say that, or is it just topical humour? And are they different things? It's fair to say the world has moved on since the nineteen nineties, isn't it? For 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 good or for evil, for better or worse. And I don't. It's really difficult to tell, isn't it? What what. What has moved? What has slipped? <clears throat> I think there's definitely a slip between the two, and by the two I mean satire and the general public. Mm. And I just, I think we've had this conversation before, and I can't remember what it was we were slabbing, but I just wonder whether the disconnection with politics and pop culture that a lot of people have. And the the broadness of of things that people can watch now and pay attention to, whether it's all been become a bit diluted, I don't I don't really know. I struggle. You, did you struggle with it? I struggled with it I, more in the first time through, and then enjoyed it more second time through. 
Well, there, so many things have changed. Unless we forget, we've changed as people, haven't we? We're talking yeah. a, a distance of 30 plus years. Uh, and and it, uh, we, we should roll back a bit as to how it started out because they used to do satirical, if that's the right word, photos. These These were... They were just for stills in magazines. Um, and I remember the announcement, oh, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be puppets. And and and, and to, to think of that as a novelty, oh, wow, they're going to move and talk. <laughs> you know, you really have mm. to pinch yourself mm. to think. I mean, it's a measure of the success in a way that we'd, we'd just take it for granted. But they started out, they would you'd just see them in photos. But of course, the, you know, there was no such thing as social media then, uh, much less video. You couldn't upload video. You could barely shoot your own in those days. Um, so I don't know, there's so many things have changed. And as I say, we've changed. And and the other thing is, I think the the, the in a way, the easier the targets and... Let's face it, Boris Johnson, this side of the Atlantic, and a certain uh, D. Trump, the other side, I think that actually makes it harder to make something worthwhile because they're just too easy to uh, cock a snoop at, if I may use that expression. And and the other thing I thought is, and and I mean, it is desperately, desperately left wing, isn't it? I mean, if you look at if you look at the amount of uh, airtime that it gave to. Um, uh, targets on the right and to targets on the left. In actual fact, targets on the left, I think, amounted to uh, one sketch of Elton John and Keir Starmer, which was hardly biting satire. They were, he was dressing him up in funny glasses and things, you know. It was like yeah. kind of... They put him in and gave him the easiest ride. That was the only sketch in the whole thing. The rest of it was about Boris Johnson, Dominic Raab, Priti Patel, Boris Johnson again, Boris and the Cabinet, Matt Hancock, um, you know, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump. And then so there were there were actually yeah, well, four sketches. They, they I mean, are the incumbents. Um, two, but two of the sketches about Donald Trump took up seven minutes of the show, and it was only twenty three minutes long. Two of the Boris Johnson ones took up five minutes. Mm. You know, and you, so there's there's a kind of I, I want to see something that that is an equal opportunity hater. That's what I want. I want to see. Well, that's what you that, are, isn't it? Yeah. God. Yeah. Am I? Definitely. Um, I mean, how can you not be in this country now with the, you know, and with the the mess that the incumbents have made, and the rubbish that the opposition are, you know? Uh, well, I mean, frightening. I think more than rubbish. But yeah, I mean, you you'd look at. I've always have been a, you know, like I've said to you, the MPs I've interviewed, I've never really, never really came across one that I thought, wow, that's somebody who really wants to do some good in the world. I thought, you know, they wanted to do what they wanted to do and and that's borne out all the while but yeah you know you just think oh it was just really i don't know if it is that they're too easy as targets i do think you don't you think you would find better jokes on twitter on a daily basis ah no yeah you've used that line i was trying to think where where that came from um because you mentioned the baguette thing didn't you yeah, yes, yeah, what, yeah. Violence what baguettes that? violence, was it? Violence baguettes violence. Oh, <laughs> they were hitting some, each other with loads of Somebody suggested that, that the reason that they were all rioting was because they were trying to get trying to have bread, trying to get a, a daily loaf of bread. Some left-wing politician had said, oh, they're only, they're only rioting because they want any bread. And somebody mm. said, yeah, but you've got to remember baguette, violence baguettes violence. And I just thought, <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's all for free. And that's the problem, isn't it, is that... Is the you know even if it's not better, it's 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 bigger, it's it's more prevalent, it's it's you know. Well, let's talk about a couple of the writers because I mean I, I'm not that across the culture so much that I recognise uh, uh, a large swathe of the writers, but but then you see uh, the likes of Phil Wang and Bert Tyler Moore. Mm. Phil Wang making a name for himself, uh, rising inexorably, I think would be true to say, as a, a stand-up act. Do like his stand up. I'm not a huge fan, but you know, I, I like the fact that he can move between presumably writing some of his own material and, and writing these gags. Um, Bert Tyler Moore's uh, claim to fame being that uh, he was the guy who had to follow uh, one Robin Williams, who did mm. an uh, unplanned gig, <laughs> drive by gig at uh, London's Comedy Store years ago. Did you, did you, see, did you pick up on the, the tribute to George Jeffrey at the end? 
No, help me out there. It it's it's there's like just before the credits ran, it said something dedicated to our dear friend George Jeffrey, who I looked up. He was Bert Tyler Moore's writing partner. They were the guys actually who created one of one of my all time favourite comedies, which we've slabbed Pete versus Life with Rafe Spall. Oh right, okay. And um he died in September. He was only fifty six. Had a heart attack. I think he's oh. he leaves his, leaves a, a wife and and daughter. Desperate, oh, desperate, sad. But this guy, yeah. I mean, along with Bert Tyler Moore, was, was responsible for Star Stories, which was slabbed. Big Train, The Kumars, Dead Ringers, Armstrong yeah. and Miller, The Windsors. In fact, I think it's George Jeffrey. The The Windsors was was his vehicle. But yeah, it was, what a what a wow. terrible. I just I just saw it just before the credits. I thought, oh, what a terrible terrible loss to humanity as well as the industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then voice artists, uh, again, you know, a lot of names that I wouldn't necessarily recognise and not household names, but um, do we know Jason Forbes? That name seems uh, familiar. Don't recognise it. I, I mm. went the other way and I looked back at some of the people who had provided voices mm. um, for, the, for the old series. Oh, yeah, that, yeah that's quite a role of honour, isn't it? And you're talking about like Chris Emmett, Phil Cool, Jan Ravens, Chris Barry, Harry Enfield, John Sessions, yes. and and a guy I interviewed actually, um, who's because he's a Brummie, Steve Nallen. Oh yes, yes. Who, who used to do Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> and he, yeah. he used to go out and he used to do it as a stand-up, didn't he? he used to wear the dress and have the handbag and everything. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Steve Nallen, funny guy, funny guy. Um, and then the old writers as well. They, they were having gags written for them by Richard Curtis, Jeffrey Atkins, Jack Doherty, Ian Hislop, uh, Murray Hunter, Nick Newman, uh, Grant and Naylor, Jeffrey Perkins. I mean, it's like it's like the who's who of comedy, isn't it? I do yeah. I do wonder whether it had a a higher bar. But I'm, I'm guess these people weren't as well known then as they are now. Uh, yes, they might be. A, a, a percentage of them would have been uh, on the way up. And let's hope that happens for um, for the, the people involved in, in this show. I did, do you know, I did wonder about the standard very early on. There was the Donald Trump gag when he's, he's lying in bed and he's... And he's Bum starts to eat in his his sphincter. <laughs> is it his bum or is it a pile? Oh, I thought it was supposed to be his sphincter was starting to eat in or something. It's a protuberance anyway. It's quite odd. I was having a discussion about this earlier today by one of our um, most loyal listeners with one of our most loyal listeners. And uh, it's not often you're saying, is it actually the sphincter or is it a pile? And Yeah. Uh, I suppose if you're a doctor working in that part of the body, perhaps that's an everyday conversation. But, I, um, it was rather disgusting, but then it's meant to be, isn't it? I just, it's not funny, though, is it? It's like, surely comedy's got to be funny, hasn't it? It's, well, yeah, that's a difficult thing to say, though, isn't it? Because you've only got to have one person say it's funny, find it funny, and then no one can say it isn't funny. You can only say, I don't find it well, funny. It's, it's, that's everything, Frank isn't it? It's, it's all, I don't find it funny, or it is. I mean, presumably, there's all, everything... Even with black humour, people find things funny that you think oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't find funny. But in the clip we heard with Cummins being a some kind of um, alien, some kind of uh, hive-related alien, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh my god, this is going slow. It's really, really dragging. Not really funny. But it, it's what they always used to do, isn't it? It's like you know, you remember the Roy Hattersley puppet that used to spit everywhere. Yes, that really was a spitting. Image, yeah, wasn't it? yeah, but. That's what that's. I suppose that's what they use. They take you know, the, people have said with Dominic Cummings they found him a bit weird, and so he's taken that kind of why is he a bit weird? I suppose I don't know why he doesn't fly. I just I don't get it at all. <laughs> Maybe he will next time. <laughs> yeah. He's got pulsing temples. I know that much. Yeah, there was there was a sort of if you dug away a bit at it, there was a a serious point being made. This this is the difficult thing I think they've got. If you want to make serious points, if you put them up front, then do you frighten off, off, off the fan base? But uh, the, the point was uh, that Boris Johnson wasn't going to sack him for anything. And so, and that really is a callback, isn't it, to the, the famous uh, Durham uh, eye, eye test driving yeah. that uh, Dominic Cummings yeah. uh, was involved in. Yeah. Damned out of his own mouth because you shouldn't drive if you're not sure of your eyesight. Not, you know, quite apart from any viruses you may or may not be carrying. Um, if you go with the popular 
image of something, then I, I'm not sure that can be called satire, can it? Because satire, satire sort of is trying to rub us up the, uh, the wrong way. But if you start from the point, oh, how do people see Dominic Cummings? Well, yeah. generally, he seems yeah. a bit weird. Yeah. Oh, and he's bald, by the way. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. um, we have a certain view on that. But if you, go, if you don't challenge that, then you're not really providing a service, are you? You're not, you're not, uh, satire should be challenging. Yeah. Should be uncomfortable viewing in a way, shouldn't it? And not not just uh, Donald Trump's derriere. Yeah, and that it's, it did feel like it was from the it was from the wrong side. That's why I say is that is that to me you were saying oh well it's fair enough to to um, to satirise or to to have targets out of Boris and Trump because they're the incumbent, but then in a way you kind of say. What if if everybody is against them or the most vocal people in showbiz and 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 social media are against them or appear to be, then mm. surely the counterculture to that is not to be with them but to choose other targets. And to, I just thought, you know, out of all the people that that you could have chosen that are left leaning, they chose none. And I think that that really does. Well, well, I say what Keir Starmer sketch was 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 all that was in a twenty three minute show, and yeah, and that wasn't challenging Keir Starmer's no. stance on anything, no. was it? You know, and just a style point. You kind of so what are you saying that the guy is so great that that's the best you could you could? You no, know, I don't think so, really. Um, mm. And then there were a lot of neutral people like Lewis Lewis Hamilton got a couple of sketches, um, which again, you know, the Lewis Hamilton the first one. He's, he's nothing. It's just like real life. It's what people have actually said about him. They said, "Why is why is Lewis Hamilton preaching to us when he drives for a company that that made staff cars for the Nazis and and you know he's sponsored by a company that made the Nazi uniforms and you know he's sponsored by all companies and it's all that kind of thing, isn't it? And and they they chose that as the target. But that's it was just like real life. It was like yeah, we know that. We know that's what he does. Yeah, it, it seemed to be taking soft targets. Against that, though, we have to say, well, I know uh, this is a BritBox original. be interesting to see. I'm going to guess it's going to end up where it started out, on ITV. Mm. That would be reasonable to suggest. Although by then, of course, it, uh, I mean, the reason it's on BritBox is to, it's just another reason to get the BritBox uh, subscription and yeah. join yeah. BBC and ITV Enterprise. And is it Channel 4 as well? I, I don't think Channel 5 got it. Is, is it going well? I, d- I don't know whether it's, I don't know what it's doing. I don't have the, the, the latest on that. Um, they're probably keeping their cards close to their chest. It's it's a late comer on a very developed scene, isn't it? Mm. The, um, mm. uh, the, the extra bolt-on subscription netflix and so on well when you think Types you know in. unlike netflix when you think it's it's largely um repeats as well um of bbc and itv you know the, there's there's not a lot of new stuff in there is there i think that's part of the problem well, they, uh, well the trick is uh, what you mean brick yeah. Uh, yeah 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 there's, there's uh yeah, I think if you've got a couple of subscriptions already, you might need more reasons to get, get a BritBox yeah. subscription. Whereas Netflix, I mean, they're creating they're creating content or having content created for them, um, so it's all it's all fresh stuff. Should we should we get another clip of? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Split an image, and uh, as I mentioned before, I think let me just check how many times. I mean, the Royals got a real kick in. They had one, two, three, four, five, five sketches. Um, it was a running gag, in effect, wasn't it? But yes, kind of. Yeah, I mean, well, there's Prince Andrew at the start as well, wasn't? It? Was the very was the show opener? Prince Andrew and the rest was Prince Harry. He did do a line. I don't know if it's in this clip, so I won't mention it now. But he did do the one line in the whole show that made me kind of go, <laughs> you know, a bit of a snorty moment. <laughs> but but other, oh, okay. other than that, anyway, uh, I will delay it no longer. So uh, yeah, in best tradition of the the last one, what do I need to say? Uh, cut to Prince Harry. Uh, where it says signature, do I put the royal seal? That's not necessary, Mr. Uh, off Wales. I see here that your previous career was in realty. Royalty? But it wasn't a career. My wife's got a Netflix empire. Who doesn't? But I want a real job. Honest work. Roll up my sleeves. Put jammy on my own scones. Please read the sign. Oh, that's a lot to read. Do you have it on audiobook? Tell me about your marketable skills. I can fly an Apache tank-killing helicopter. And have you killed many tanks? None that I was supposed to. Mm. Anything else? I'm good at collecting checks from the government. Do you have that here? 
Oh, that's called unemployment. To get it, you have to have an actual job first. Right, right. Oh, I could cut ribbons to open hospitals. I've got my own scissors. Don't worry, they're safety. Oh, it's OK. Same thing happened at the children's hospital. Oh, the kids loved it. And with that, he cut off his nose, possibly to spite his face. <gasps> was your, was your favourite line your only chortle or chipotle line in there? Yes, it was, yeah. Did you recognise it? No, I didn't, actually. Did, Did I hear you snort it, during that? No, no, he said that I used to fly, I used to fly a tank-killing Apache helicopter. He said, have you killed many tanks? He went, none that I was supposed to. <laughs> 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 but again, it was all a bit obvious, wasn't it? Don't you think it's all a bit... Like, why is he talking with an Australian accent? Well, that, that's the other thing. There were some disappointments, some great voices. I mean, David Attenborough's spot on. Mm. Trump um, was good, I thought. Trump, whoever does Trump, is nailed it, didn't you think? Oh, was, I think that's Matt Ford. I couldn't be a hundred percent sure, but Matt Matt's very talented, and I've heard him. Uh, uh, he's an interesting guy because he knows his politics as well, and um, and he writes for the show and writes generally and stand up when people can do stand up and so on. So he's very talented. Mm. Um, but yeah, disappointments voice wise, the biggest for me, I'm sorry to say, was Matt Hancock, who seemed to need Pretty Patel to say. Ah, oh, Mr. Hancock, just mm. so we knew. Mm. Um, I, I'm just, I'm a bit mystified because surely he's not the hardest to do. Um, Dominic Raab, well, the sketch he was in didn't allow him to be too realistic. I mean, we we got him a bit more real bit later on. Um, uh, Pretty Patel as a dominatrix. Yeah, there's some interesting things there. And some interesting design things. When I looked again, um, little details in the background, if you paused it, as a saddo like me does, um, poster with uh, Theresa May, but sort of cartoony version. So, that, you know, as I say, there's a lot of talent in there, some some great puppets, uh, good design, some good sound stuff, good performances, good writing. But the whole is not quite coming together, I don't think. And no. I don't, I don't know. They why. have got a tough job on their hands. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, my and, and the reason I said about disconnection. I mean, that's that's really a um, it's more a confession than anything, I suppose. Really, is that you know, I I tend not to. Um, I haven't watched the news since I left radio about four years ago, five years ago. Um, because mm. I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to be up to speed with it. So Boris is prime minister now. You won't have heard that. Who's Boris? Did you say? Is he? He's, <laughs> he's what? Boris Pasternak. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And so I found myself thinking, well, I don't know what Dominic Raab or Cummings or Patel or Hancock sound like because I don't watch the TV. I don't watch TV news. So mm. uh, I don't know what Lewis Hamilton sounds like. I don't really know what. Greta Thunberg sounds like Greta Thunberg unless she unless she says how dare you. That's the only one I've ever heard her say. Uh, Jacinda Ardern, the the um, New Zealand uh, premier, no, premier, no idea what she sounds like. You know, so I'm kind of a bit stuffed really when it when it comes to um, when it comes to all that sort of stuff. It's interesting because it has been slaughtered, hasn't it, by the. Uh, the proles like you and I, you know, the ordinary man in the street who who just loves a bit of comedy and um, has enough time to let people know their thoughts on it, um, have absolutely. I'm not. What I'm saying is, I'm not talking about critics. Um, You're talking about social media onslaught. Then. Well, wherever you look, I mean, if you look on IMDb or if you look on, you know, um, uh, wherever there are forums or uh, message boards where people are having conversations, like Digital Spy and things like that. It's mm. not. It's not gone down very well at all. I do wonder whether there is a new sensitivity in this country, a right to be offended, that means that everybody is offended by everything, and that you can't. You know, I mean, there were people moaning that how dare they put uh, Greta Thunberg puppet in there? It's disgusting, and you know, talk about exploiting her, and you're thinking. Hang on a second. Who's who's dragging around the world and putting her in press conferences and telling her what to say and sticking on her boat mm. to America? Surely those are the people that are exploiting her, not not people who made a little latex puppet about her. Do you know what I mean? You, mm. I wonder if mm. it's like this kind of. It's the age of outrage. I mean, I th I think coming back to Jacinda, the New Zealand 
premiere. I thought the gag there was a little bit braver than some of the stuff. I wasn't coming at it from the same direction as you. It was more that they were having a go at her because she's ultra nice or that's her PR image. Um, well, there, there was a practical problem there. Sorry, this is a slight digression, but the, the, the chorus singing was, I'm quite sure, deliberately sort of a bit rowdy, yeah. um, which is fine, but it then made it hard to hear the lyrics. And I, I, I was thinking, what would they have done in the previous spits, as it's known in the trade, oh, uh, you know, back in the 80s and 90s? Well, I've got one foot in the camp, darling, because I know someone whose brother helps make the puppets. But that's oh, wow. about as tenuous as it gets. That's good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, anyway, but I'm sure, you know, do you remember the uh, chicken song, yeah. Deck Chair Up Your Nose? Yeah. And the, the, yeah. the, the, didn't that, that had um, subtitles. Yeah. And I thought that was crying out for subtitles just to get the value of the, the words and the rhymes about Jacinda. The chicken, you see, that's the thing. The chicken song was a parody of Agadou, wasn't it? And, and, those, kind of, mm. and those kind of songs. Yeah. But I don't think... You see, music isn't that big now. I don't. I mean, if you ask most people in the city, what's number one? I think probably the kids would know. But do you know what's number one right now? No, but then would my dad have known at my age? Probably not. Maybe that's the thing. I don't know. But I just wonder whether it. You know, Sunday night everybody used to listen to Top of the Pops, didn't they? The the, the chart rundown on on uh, mm. on the radio, on the wireless waves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I don't, I don't, you're right. I mean, I thought it was exactly, I put it on my notes, exactly the same that, um, you know, they used to have the bouncing ball subtitles, didn't they? You know, and, <laughs> yes. and you could sing along at home. But yeah, I couldn't understand a word yeah. of what the hell was going on with that one. I don't, I don't really know. That's a shame they missed a bit of a trick there. Can I, a big shout out to, you didn't see him on screen, but a big, big shout out to a man who I am um, just so enamored with his work because I see a lot mm. of it. Because his name's Steve Kinman. He he does a lot of stuff in children's television. In actual fact, he works with Justin Fletcher on a program called Just oh, right, Justin's yeah. House, and he plays Robert the Robot, who's Justin's housekeeper. Um, he also mm. plays William Shakespeare on 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 uh, live shows and various other things that they they do when they when they they do stuff for kids. And he's just one of the most talented. Every time I see him, I think he's just such a talented guy. And I never recognise him in two roles. I think. That's Steve Kinman again. I can't believe it. He's actually one of the one of the um, uh, the puppeteers. Oh, really? Right. So yeah, um, he's done a lot of radio. Well, he's done a bit of radio. He's done things like Giles Wembley Hog and Hot Thirty Three and Concrete Cow on Radio Four and stuff like that. But yeah, just thought I'd mention because I just I just think he's such a talented guy. It's a shame. It's a shame we're not seeing him um, in front of camera. As, as opposed to below it, where I presume he is. It, it would, wouldn't be a very good puppeteer if we were seeing True. Really, He'd probably get frankly. a sack, wouldn't he, really, if he did stand up and go, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. My name's Steve. Hello, Shane. How are you? You don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woof, woof. Yeah. Anyway, I feel us um, sort of sidling inexorably towards uh, giving marks out of five each. I think you're right. I'm going to... I'm going to put my head above the parapet. Pira, pa, do a pira, do, do, <laughs> Steady on. I'm going to do a pirouette above the parapet oh. with a pair of pets. I always think of, that, of porridge when uh, when I do things like that. We say, what, what did you say? When who was it that said? Somebody said. Uh, I think it was Godper said to Fletcher. He said, uh, "Oh well," he said, "Kesara," and he went, "Kiss her what?" <laughs> <laughs> Nice one. We'll leave that dangling there, um, rudely. <laughs> now I'm I'm torn. When I first watched it, I, I was um, I hadn't quite warmed to it to the degree I was able to a little in the second time through. Um, so it was going to be half marks down the middle, two and a half. I think because of the skill and just warming to it a second time through and seeing. Uh, a bit more detail and so on. I was just going to give it another notch. So um, three out of five from me, but wanted to love it more and wanted to love it, I suppose, like the old days, like the old uh, nostalgic fool I am. Mm. But you know what they say, nostalgia ain't what it used to be. And No, um, no, more's the pity. I felt exactly the same as you. I wanted to love it. I didn't. Uh, I won't I won't prolong the agony. One and a half from me. <gasps> um, oh, I just... Still agony, though. I was left so... Fed up, but then you know it's 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 the return and it's series one. I do worry about the political skew on it, and I think you know good comedy doesn't have doesn't take a side, and 
that's the bottom line is that you know you should be able to look at the at the sketches and go wow yeah that is pretty even handed they've they've gone for everybody you know mm. Mm. i don't think they did by any stretch of the imagination i think they went for the prince harry thing was a kind of easy target i, I accept what you're saying about it being a running gag um but you know trump and boris and you know if they're doing gags that haven't been done fair enough but they didn't and I don't know. I mean, the Disney one, I didn't... There was a Disney ske- sketch in there. I didn't really understand what was going on, to be honest with you. Um, so... Well, they were trying to... Yeah, well, it was a bit of um, virtue signalling. Yeah. There was a bit of a point to it, but, um, yeah. Just, just a very quick thing on the left-right thing, just recalling it uh, from the first time around. Do you remember who appeared falling over in the opening titles each week? Yeah, over on, on the, the beach, beach, Neil Kinnock. Neil Kinnock, and you think now, oh, would they? Would they do if Keir Starmer stumbled in some way? They were so kind to him, really, through um, Sir Elton. Um, you wonder whether they would even dare do that it's, these days. It's, yes, yeah, it's, it's really sad, isn't it? Because, you, you, like I say, you know, I want to see, I want to see them attacking everybody. Like I say, I think, and it's sad because a lot of the comedy now is very left leaning, and I think. I think good comedy um, doesn't take sides. I think that's that's the bottom line for me, really. I, I did. Do you know? There's a quick one as well. I just want to mention. I thought, oh, why mm. didn't they use the original theme music? And then I went on YouTube to listen to the original theme music. And the reason they didn't use it is because it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's cheap eighties synthesizers, isn't it? <laughs> it was terrible. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. So, what does he what does he come out with? Uh, Four and a half out of ten for Spitting Image fails to make the halfway point, but there you go. Uh, <gasps> it's available on Britbox, as we said, uh, and it's an Avalon production for Britbox. Now, big boy, what have you got for us next week? Well, if you think there's not many laughs in COVID, um, this is a kind of fight back by, well, producers of stand-up comedy to prove it can be done um so i've got to applaud that for one uh, whether we like the comedy is another thing altogether i haven't seen this one yet but it's in a series bbc series available on iplayer called stand up for live comedy um and it is a uh, sort of semi-lockdown comedy i've chosen series one well there is only series one to my knowledge at the moment uh, episode three though which is you'll love it mate not a lot it's birmingham all right um at least i would get my um accent polished up uh, having seen that by uh, in time for next week's show so once again it's on iplayer as we speak it is available for another 11 months stand up for live comedy series one episode three birmingham is this, is this a program for young people is it then I believe so. People under 50. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. That's I, really young. I, I, uh, I should say, though, it must be above a certain age because it says uh, it's got a warning, contains adult humour. Oh, I'll have to watch a couple of episodes of uh, Georgia Mildred to cleanse my palate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, like a little sorbet afterwards. Yes. I'm sitting there like a little sorbet. I don't know which part of the bay was <laughs> sorest, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, looking forward to that. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget, as I mentioned at the start of the Comedy Slab podcast this time around, there are 116 episodes just ahead of us on this one. And on anti-social media, we are, naturally enough, at Comedy Slab on Twitter. Do please follow us there. And I've watched that video, by the way, and it is very entertaining. Steve Coogan, um, an early incarnation of Alan Partridge and, and seeing the creative process. It's fascinating, it isn't it? It is fascinating, it is. yeah. It if you've not seen it, head along yeah. to our, uh, to our uh, Twitter channel and have, yeah. have a look at one of the uh, previous tweets there because it, it is a, the video of how they put the, the, the uh, Alan Partridge stuff together. It's, it's like a kind of writing rehearsal, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's seeing these gems emerge in front of your very eyes. So at Comedy Slab on Twitter, do follow us there, as I say, and on Facebook, likewise, at Comedy Slab, uh, do please like our page. Recommend us in person if you are allowed to meet any people in person these days. Uh, or you can do it over a, a famous, uh, well-loved uh, approved uh, 
a proprietary brand of video conferencing, uh, whichever is your poison. And finally, but in no way leastly, uh, a nice uh, generous star rating would be hugely appreciated if you so are inclined uh, at uh, I what's it called iTunes or <laughs> Apple Podcasts. It confuses us every week. Not a clue. Never gets any better. But thank you in advance for all of that, and thank you for listening. And so, until next time, uh, I'm off to go and uh, practice my best Telly Savalas. Adrian, I'm loving your work, baby. <laughs> Who loves you? I do. Oh, and uh, you can take that uh, lollipop out of your mouth as you say that as well. Um, wipe that look on, off your face at the same time. Um, and I, for my part, will be experimenting with different extremities of my anatomy uh, doing the tweets as I'm in charge of tweets this week. I'm the duty twit <laughs> at Comedy Slab. Oh, there's an image you could do without. And he wonders why nobody wants to borrow his phone, eh? <laughs> 